Let's see. I'll keep two pints worth of Guinness libations for the both of us gents. Good show itself, old Thomas. Oh, you uh, fellas ain't from around here, are you? Goodness, no, I should say not. If we had been, we'd not have been through half the tribulations and normal stuff that we've experienced. I'll tell you that. Rough one, huh? Oh, yes, indeed. Allow me the luxury of a tale. Twas daybreak a fortnight ago. Milo and I were awaiting the cock's crow, not having yet shook the sleep from our eyes, when a mongrel cur came scratching about the door of our hostel. You mean duck? God's breath, yes. Canine for sure. Unless it was a lupine, which is eminently possible. Well, in the land of our queen, it's only proper to offer a loose hound a speckle of bacon. For, most likely, he is in the midst of tracking a fox for the sport of his master. And a quick snodging of pork conch can only steal him to finish the job. Be I knight or knave, I was obligated and privileged to offer him a spot. So, I opened the door and unleashed upon myself the employed hellhound of a town constable. God, it was ghastly. You see, evidently he'd been sniffing around the premises in search of a purveyor of illegal but enchanting powders and capsules. With my bacon, I'd invited him to give my loins a thorough chomping, whence they won't soon recover. Unwittingly. Utterly unwittingly. You couldn't have paid the town dunce to perform in a more unwitting fashion. Ouch. Sounds pretty rough. Ghoulishly so. Yeah, it's just a mistake, because you guys are from the other side of the ocean. But not the only one, my shrewd fellow. No, for just yesterday we were in a pub down this very cobbled lane, enjoying a pint, when Milo here launches into one of his tirades against William Shakespeare. This guy? Doesn't seem much like the ranting type. Well, he certainly does get going from time to time. Now, he had chiseled the bottom out of his Guinness mug in order to create a, a hollering comb for himself, and was roundly castigating the bar, and naming him a bastard and so forth. God damn him. A forbearance, Milo. For, you see, in Britain, we're all a bit tired of this whole rot about dear Willie. He's musty, and uh, dropping him for a bit wouldn't bother us at all. You see, you can best spot a moldy berry on your own bush. That's what we always say. Well, how were we to know he was still so outlandishly revered over here? <laughs> Milo's griping started a row of Homerian proportions, with all lads and lasses in earshot of the pub clambering for a piece of him. We'd started a revolt to beat the boxers. Unwittingly! Witless to the fullest. The depth of the absence of our wits was truly astonishing. That's too bad. Scary moment there, huh, guys? God himself would have been frightened, you would. It sounds like trouble that seems to find you guys, huh? Yes, you'll not be surprised, then, I wager, at the content of a third tale which comes to mind. Now, oh, just this morn, in the wee hours, Milo and I were trudging back to our hostel after a uh, heated match of billiards. Good competition it was. When along comes a young dame piloting an auto coach. Well, she slows down beside us and posits the question of whether we would like a lift. And that's where our British sensibilities got the better of us. For you see, Milo lives in a two-story flat in Lower Havenshire, and for some time has been contemplating the purchase of an interfloor tweening contraption. To reduce his daily exertions. You mean like an elevator? As referenced by you Yanks, correct. Go up, then go down again, you see. Stairs give me spider veins. And, well, if this young side saddler had a machine available for purchase, we decided it would be worthwhile to have a look-see. So, we climbed into her powered carriage, but had not traveled many blocks when she propositioned us to join her in a bit of Off With The Knickers. God help us. Enjoying the frail elderly bachelorhood in which we find ourselves, Milo and I have an energy for carnal exertions these days, so we begged off. Well, she responded by labeling us a damn waste of time and continued to make aggressive postures towards us until we relinquished our money purses. With her heels, she then forced us out the door of the vehicle and sped off. <laughs> Why, we'd have been taken in by a vendor of genitological activities. Unwittingly! Not a wisp of wit in our boards. Confoundingly, fustigatingly devoid of wit. So she didn't have an elevator to show you guys. 
Ground floor as well I'll be staying. My poor legs. You know, there must be a time where I forgot how many meters were in a furlong. What? Well, you know, because in America we don't use meters or furlongs much. As much. Gods! Keep the right idea, Milo. I'm on your heels. Hey, where are you guys going? Life's too short to spend the rest of the evening trying to have enlightened discourse with someone who's clearly such an imbecile. Going out then.